Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Pennsylvania County Planning Commission meeting, February the 4th, 2020. We'll have the roll call. Ms. Henderson. Present. Ms. Meese. Present. Mr. Hawkins. Present. Mr. Dudley. Here. Mr. Stowe. Present. Mr. Horn. Present. Mr. Haymore. Present. And myself. Let the record show eight present, zero absent. Will everyone please stand for a moment of silence and remain standing <coughs> for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. All citizens of the United States of America will join me in pledging allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> The hearing of the citizens, no one signed up. Does anyone here wish to address the commissions on anything other than what's on the agenda? If not, the approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, make a motion we approve the agenda to present it. Second. Motion by Mr. Stowe, second by Ms. Meese. The agenda be approved as presented. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion's passed, 8-4. Zero of yes. Approval of the minutes, January the 7th, 2020. Chairman, I move to accept them as presented. Second it. Motion by Mr. Haymore, second by Mr. Stowe. Minutes be approved as presented in the package. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motions passed, eight four. Zero of yes. The chairman's report. I would like to welcome Mr. Harker. As a new member, this is the first meeting, and welcome. Certainly glad to have him. Looking forward to serving with you. And I know the other commissioners are, and he represents the Sands River District. And appointed by Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good to be here. Mr. Mike Kennison, the Code Compliance Officer, we welcome you to be with us tonight. And I know we'll probably be asking you some questions later on at the uh, public hearing. Yes, sir. I think Mr. Slim. Slim just Slim. came in. And also, Mr. Slim come in. He is the director of the public safety. We're glad to have you uh, mm -hmm. with us, and we'll probably be asking you some questions on the public hearing later on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Pursuant to Article 5, Division 7 of the Pennsylvania County Zoning Ordinance, we, the Planning Commission, have been empowered to hear and decide specific applications in support of said ordinance and to make recommendations to the Board of Supervisors or the Board of Zoning Appeals. In accomplishing this important task, we are charged with promoting the health, safety, and general welfare of the citizens of Pennsylvania County. We must ensure that all our decisions and recommendations be directed to these goals, and that each be consistent with the environment, the comprehensive plan, and the best interest of Pennsylvania County, its citizens, and its prosperity. Anyone here to speak to the board regarding zoning cases will be limited to three minutes. At 7.04, Case R-20-001 is open to public hearing. Ms. Hayes. Case R-20-001, Susie Q LLC has petitioned to rezone 18.14 acres located off McDaniel Road and Riceville Road in the Bannister Election District from R-1 Residential Suburban Subdivision District to A-1 Agricultural District for agricultural uses horses. Once the property is rezoned to A1, all uses listed under Section 35178 are permitted. 
The staff summary is enclosed in the board packet. Mr. Chairman, Susan Brown is here to represent the petition. Ms. Brown, good evening and welcome. Would you come forward, please? Do you have anything you'd like to present to the commissioners other than what Ms. Hayes has already presented to us? No, not really. Any questions for Ms. Brown? Thank you. If no one has signed up for this, if anyone here did not have the opportunity to sign up, wish to address this case? If not, at 705, case R-20-001 is closed for public hearing. Uh, Ms. Hanson. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a proposition that in the case of R-20-001, that we recommend to the Board of Supervisors to approve this case um, to be zoned from R-1 to A-1. Motion by Ms. Henderson to recommend to the Board of Supervisors the zone be changed. Is it second? Second. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Dudley. Any discussions? I would like to say, uh, According to the county ordinance, uh, this property does not front a state-maintained road, even though it has an easement, and she can change from R1 to mm -hmm. A1, according to the ordinance, but the cannot be, according to the county ordinance, R1. Is that right, Ms. Hayes? That is correct. R1 property requires 75 foot of state-maintained state road maintained. frontage. That's right. Any more discussion? If not, Ms. Hayes, will you call the roll for the vote? Mr. Motley? Yes. Mr. Haymore? Yes. Mr. Harker? Yes. Mr. Stowe? Yes. Ms. Meese? Yes. Ms. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Mr. Dudley? Yes. It's 8 4. Case R 20 001 to recommend to the Board of Supervisors the zone be changed from R 1 to A 1 by vote of 8 4 0 against. At 7 07, Case R 20 002. Is open to public hearing. Ms. Hayes. Case R 20 002 JD Compton has petitioned to rezone a total of 56.42 acres located on Compton Road in the Bannister Election District from M1 Industrial District Light Industry to M2 Industrial District Heavy Industry <coughs> for future development, which will be a concrete plant. Once the properties are rezoned to M2, all uses listed on their section 35402 are a permitted use. The staff summary is enclosed in the board packet. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Compton is here to represent the petition. Mr. Compton? Yes, sir. Good evening. Will you come forward, please? Well, do you have anything you'd like to present to the commission okay. other than what Ms. Hayes has already? Okay, good. Well, um, I don't know if I, I didn't know it was going to be any opposition, but um, it is uh, Southside Concrete, which is located in the same area, uh, is they're needing to expand because Pennsylvania County, as you know, is growing, and it's a growing man for concrete with all the new things coming in. And um, the only way that they can service or provide concrete some of the some of the corporations require that they have two plants and they don't have room <coughs> where they are which is within 200 yards of where this is and uh, so they're just trying to expand and I just would ask the Planning Commission to to uh, change this to M2 and that's pretty much all I got to say. I do have people signed up to speak, so if you'll have a seat near the front, and you'll get to come back and rebuttal. Okay, thank you. Ms. Catherine Carter Bendall. Good evening, welcome. Good evening to you too. Uh, I'm Catherine Carter Bendall, the owner of a 175.570 acre farm on Lawless Creek Road. Next to the property, Mr. Compton wishes to have rezoned from M1 Industrial <coughs> District Light to M2 Industrial District Heavy Industry for future development. My property adjoins a large residential subdivision. The homes and my <coughs> farm are well kept. 
I do not think it is in the best interest of the neighborhood for the rezoning to change from M1 to M2. Last year, I had the timber cut on my farm and have made arrangements for it to be replanted in pines this spring. I appreciate land and strive to keep my property clean and up to date. If Mr. Compton's 56.42 acre, acres is rezoned to M2, it will open the neighborhood to any kind of building or business in the future. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Ms. Ben Dawson? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Ben Dawson is the only one signed up. If anyone came in late, do not have the opportunity to sign up and wish to address this case. If not, Mr. Compton? Yes, sir. Do you have anything you'd like to you come back up to the front? You don't have to. Do you have anything you'd like to address other than what Ms. Bendall has told us? Well, I mean, I can respect, you know, what she has to say. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think it'll affect any trees growing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's what she had said. Um, actually, it, her property is a big buffer big buffer between the residential community and the business community um, but you know I, I I don't see where it would hurt anything in any way and that's all I got to say thank you but any questions for Mr. Mr. Compton, Compton? in it <coughs> in this property in the end is a uh, enterprise zone it is yes sir well that's that's pretty much zoned to be. I would think so. That's pretty much zoned to be uh, industrial. Industrial. I mean, that's what the enterprise zone because you're able to get mm -hmm. yes, cut sir. rate loans and different right. things that's that you correct. would not be able to get otherwise. That's why another reason they wanted to use yes, this sir. property. Thank you, sir. Any I don't other have any questions? questions. Thank, it. Thank you, Mr. Cumberland. Thank you, sir. It's 712, case R-20-002 is closed to public hearing. Any discussion? Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that in the case of R-20-002, um, that the board, we recommend to the um, board, of board of Supervisors, forgive me, um, to have this from M1 to M2. Be a motion for Ms. Hanson to recommend to the Board of Supervisors is going to be changed. Is there a second? Second. Second for Ms. Meese. Any discussion? If not, Ms. Hayes, will you call the roll for the vote? Mr. Motley? Yes. Mr. Haymore? Yes. Mr. Harker? Yes. Mr. Stowe? Yes. Ms. Meese? Yes. Ms. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Mr. Dudley? Yes. It's 8 4. Case R 20 02. Recommend to the Board of Supervisors zone be changed from M1 to M2 Very by good. a vote of 8 good 4 0 against. At 713, Case S20-002 is open to public hearing. Ms. Hayes. Case S20-002, Barbara Ann Warren has petitioned for a special use permit on 1.03 of an acre located on Ringgold Depot Road in the Dan River Election <coughs> District to allow for placement of a single wide mobile home to be used as her residence. The staff summary is enclosed in the board packet. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Warren is here to represent the petition. Ms. Warren, you come forward. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Do you have anything you'd like to present to the commission other than what Mrs. Hayes has already presented to us? Um, nothing but I purchased the land and it's mine, mm -hmm. and I have a mobile home that I would like to put on my land. Okay. There are other mobile homes that are next door or two doors down, which I don't see where, I know they probably were grandfathered in, but to me, mm -hmm. one mobile home is no different from another one, mm -hmm. and I would like to put my home on my, on my land. Okay. Ms. Warren, what, what, year, how old is, what year is your mobile home? It's a 1991 Oakwood. I don't have anything. Uh, we have some people signed up, so if you'll sit down mm -hmm. near the front, you'll get okay. to come back and rebuttal after. All right, thank you. Signed up. 
Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, you go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Um, I believe that this 1991 single wide mobile home is not in the character with other homes in the community. They've just built two large modular homes, uh, one next to Mount Zion Church and then another one next to that. Uh, they're very beautiful homes. They uh, improve the aesthetics of the road as you come into it. I don't think that uh, a 91 single wide is an upgrade to the other residents in the community who have shown their desire to improve uh, their buildings, their homes, um, and the property values. Um, they try to enhance the community property there, and I don't think that a 91 mobile home would be an enhancement. Um, that home, I do believe, would require massive uh, increases in the county facilities because the modular homes are built with energy efficiency that I don't think a 91 would comp complement. I don't think that they're built with the modern technology, the window sections that are insulated and things of that nature. These older buildings have asbestos sometimes in the floors and things like that, that modern construction has, ba <coughs> excuse me, has banned. Um, and I believe that the community is showing their desire to upgrade their homes and their property values. So it appears that a 91 mobile home could decrease the property values of the existing homes and the county is not going to reduce the tax obligation for individuals. So it would be a double burden of a reduced value of your property, but a maintenance of the same property taxes that would be uh, required. So um, things like 200 amp service that modern homes have, uh, the, the single wide mobile home probably wouldn't have that. It wouldn't have the advantages of more energy efficient operation, foundation requirements that have gone up in the county, uh, a lot of different areas. And I don't think a 91 mobile home has that significant value anymore as compared to the manufactured and mobile homes that have been uh, built within the last couple of years in that area. Could you summarize your three minutes? Is okay. Coming up. So. All right. So that's why I would prefer that this person would go ahead and get a new mobile home or one, a manufactured building, just like the other ones that have been installed in the street. Any questions for Mr. Randy? Thank you, sir. Ms. Rosa Myers. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Randy. I don't have a problem with it. I live right across the street where it was built, you know, put. I just feel like it should be updated with everything else that's being updated in the community. Other than that, I welcome her there, if, you know, but a 20 some year old and everybody else has updated theirs, I just feel that she should, you know, make some kind of arrangement to do that for us, for the community, because it's all houses. Even to the two modern ones that they just built, they look like houses. They're nice. And that's all I'm asking. Any questions? I got a question. Um, is there a type of um, building code or ordinance in that area that says it has to be certain this or certain that? Or um, tell um, me. I really can't speak on that right now. Yeah. But I can only speak on what I have done to my home. Sure. And the people that are fixing up their homes mm -hmm. around there. And I'm just saying the same thing that Mr. Ramsey is saying. I understand. I just wondered if it was certain, you couldn't have a certain 20, 30 year old home or something there. Well, we have come up against this before. Like a neighborhood, neighborhood yeah. ordinance. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ra can I speak to Mr. Ramsey? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to address well, us. I just wanted to ask Mr. Ramsey was, 
due to the fact that he know, because we both been there. I've been there 60 years. And I just just feel like this is something new to, especially me, I sit on my porch. And you know, I, I want to see something nice across the street. I've been looking at trees for a long time. So, you know, I want to be able to sit on the porch and feel the same peace and comfort that I feel when I walk down or drive down the highway and I look over there at Mr. Pound Saunders and them modern day trail. You know, I just want the same thing. I just don't want anything to come into the neighborhood. I mean, you know, I, I know this is her land. I know she wants to put her trailer there. But is it up to date with everything else that's on State Road 726? I'm telling you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Keisha Cheney. Good evening. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I am Keisha Cheney, and I'm actually the sales manager at Yates Homes in Blairs, Virginia. And my home is one of the beautiful homes that Mr. Um, I don't know his name, but who, what he spoke about. Um, I did build my house about three years ago. Um, I do have a modular home. I have a Cape Cod. My house is probably about 3,300 square feet with 1,040 <laughs> being unfinished and 2,400 downstairs being finished. Um, so I understand and I get what they're saying, but one trailer, and it's only a trailer because that's what it's called, a trailer, um, <laughs> and it may look like a square box, but it is not rusted, it is not in bad condition, it's actually in good condition, and if anybody needs to be worried about bringing the value down, it should be me, because with all due respect, my house is the most expensive house that's on the road. So if it's, if, if it's anybody that should say, no, I don't want it to be there, it should be mine because my house did appraise for $230,000. Um, I understand about the energy efficiency, but you're not just bringing a bunch of junk. And people can't always afford. They have what they have. And it's unfortunate that she can't go buy a double wide or she can't purchase a modular home, but sh it's safe for her. And she's by herself. She doesn't have a bunch of wild children that's gonna be partying. I mean, you know, it's, it's none of that's gonna go on. So I get what they're saying, but this is her home. That's her land. And I feel as though she should have the right to put it there. And again, if there's anyone should, that should feel that way, it should be me. And I'm not worried about it bringing the value of my house down at all. I deal with this all the time. I'm in this business. I've been in it for eight years. And one trailer is not gonna hurt that neighborhood at all. I appreciate your time. Thank you, ma'am. You're Any welcome. Questions? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Was there any questions? No. No, that's it. Thank okay, you're welcome. That's all I have signed up to wish to speak. Does anyone came in late wish to speak on this case? Mm -hmm. If not, Miss Warren. Uh, 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 you, you have one right there. <coughs> Come here. Excuse me. Thank you. I didn't see. Are you good? State your name Betty and the address, Cheney. please. Betty Cheney. Okay. And I live in that neighborhood. Um, in fact, I live right beside Keisha, this folk. She have a, you know, a Marshall home. I don't have a Marshall home, but I have a double wide. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's my home, and I take good care of it. And I feel like if somebody want to move something down there, we shouldn't hold against them to, to put whatever they want to put on their land. Like she said, everybody can't afford a Marshall home. I wish I could have, but I didn't. But I got a double wide, and it's just as pretty as a Marshall home. Mm. So I feel like she want to move her home out there and then, you know, set it up to where she can add on, you know. She ain't got to be just a big old, you know, Marshall house that she want to live in. That's what she can afford, so let her put what she want to put on her land. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Is it anyone else that did not have an opportunity to sign up? If not, Miss Warren, will you come forward, please? <clears throat> You have a chance to read both. Do you have anything you'd like to say after? Um, I'm not trying to be funny, but I have what I have. But now if they want to help me purchase a double wide modular, I'm all for it. But that's what I have, a try. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ms. Warren, yeah. first, Mr. I have tried a couple times. I'm your representative, and I've tried a couple times to get in touch with you. And I've been there and seen the property. Do you currently own your mobile home? Yes. And where is it located now? In um, OK. Construction mobile park. Uh, by Dan River High School mm -hmm. in that area? Yes. Okay. 
I, I was a little concerned in the packet because it said a 2000 model, and now I understand it's a 91 model. It's 29 years old. I understand that. I understand that. Do you have any intentions of going forward and upgrading or when you can do something else? Yes, I'm already doing that. I put um, <coughs> windows in, the, I put the new windows in my trailer. Uh -huh. Um, I am going to underpin my trailer uh -huh. and well, I'm sure code requires that does it not Mike? Yes. Excuse me. Yes, but yes, those are my intentions But like I said, I want to do it to my home to upgrade I understand my house. that. Yes. I understand that. And of course, I mean, of course like down the street the trailers that are right next door to the gentleman here they haven't done nothing to improve theirs, but I'm not down to them. That's maybe they don't have the money to improve theirs. Mm -hmm. The the houses across the street, some of them don't even have the windows in, have like some boards up or whatever. I'm not down in that either because maybe they don't have the money to do, or maybe somebody's not living in it. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I'm going to fix mine the way that I want it to look like their module and his brick. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I understand. If there were not other mobile homes in the area, I would have an issue with it. I understand that. But I don't. Thank you for your question. You're welcome. Answers. Thank you for your time. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Jennifer, do you have a question? Yes. I, first, I have a comment, if it's appropriate. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to congratulate you. Um, Thank to you. be a homeowner Thank is a significant um, accomplishment. Thank you. So that's first. Um, and two, I have a question as to how long you have owned the property. Um, I purchased the property about four, five, about five years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. But I didn't actually put it in my name until this year. Oh, that's you know. fine. Okay. And the um, mobile home, you stated it was a 91 Oakwood. How long have you owned um, Oakwood? Ever since 06, 07. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is it paid off, if you don't mind my yes, asking? it's mine. Okay. So you own it free and clear and the land free and clear. Yes. Again, an accomplishment. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Meese. Um, I just want to say, um, not everybody's born with a silver spoon in the mouth. Um, you got to crawl before you walk. I am very impressed with you. Uh, you don't have children. I'm not sure where you stand. I have a son. But you have worked hard, I'm sure, to pay for your land. And I've always said, you cannot control the land next to you unless you own it, own it. Mm -hmm. and as far as I know you you know you you going by the guidelines there's no guidelines saying that you can't put that trailer there for the county what I'm hearing is what the neighbors want yeah mm. and we hear a lot about kindness <coughs> I think these Cheney ladies are certainly demonstrating kindness tonight they are welcoming you to that community. I feel like that in due time, you're going to have this prettiest little trailer on that road that you're going to continue when you have the money to improve your house. It might not be much to everybody, but it's home to you. And a lot of people know that tonight. I wish you well. I know you're going to be the best neighbor down there, and I just hope all the rest of them will open their arms and welcome you into the neighborhood because I can see you're going to be a great neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. At 729, case S20-002 is closed to public hearing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Horn. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. In case S-20-002, I'll make a motion. That we recommend to the Board of Zoning Appeals, we approve mm -hmm. this special use permit. Second. Motion by Mr. Horn, second by Mr. Dudley. We recommend to the Board of Zoning Appeals they uh, issue a special use permit for a single wide mobile home for her personal residence. Any discussions? If not, Ms. Hayes, will you call the roll? Mr. Motley? Yes. Mr. Haymore? Yes. Mr. Harker? Yes. Mr. Stowe? Yes. Ms. Meese? Yes. Ms. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Mr. Dudley? Yes. That's eight four. Case S20-00-002 by motion of 840 again is request for the Board of Zone Appeals to issue a special use permit <coughs> for placement of a single wide mobile home 
call her personal residence. It's 730. Public hearing is open for a proposed revision to Pennsylvania County Code, Chapter 35, Division 10, Business District, General B2, Section 35-365, Permitted Uses, to Section 36-366, Special Use Permits. Ms. Hayes. Yes, yeah, so last month I brought it before the board. <coughs> Um, and the Planning Commission recommended holding a public hearing. The staff recommended taking um, gaming, uh, let's see, gaming and arcade type games and moving it from B2 permitted by right to special uses so that we could better keep up with the facilities. So we've held the public hearing. I've got Mike Henderson here, which is our code official to answer any questions and Chris Slant, which is over the fire marshal's emergency management. He's the director, so he's very knowledgeable if y'all have any questions. I do have somebody to sign up who wish to speak. Do we want to hear this them before we ask questions, or what's the wish of the commission? Just yes. hear from the public. Let's hear from them yeah. first. Yeah. Hear from the public. <laughs> okay, what's the feeling? Is that good? Don't that? Yeah, I'll be. Yes, sir. Good evening and welcome. Thank you very much. Um, do I have three minutes or do I have a little bit? I'm an attorney from Richmond. We're long-winded. So. <laughs> I'll say wait. Do we yep. need yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try not to be too Thank terribly you for long. Calling that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, as I said, my name is Fielding Douthat. I'm from the law firm of Woods Rogers in their Richmond um, office. And over the past six months or so, I have had the opportunity to deal with these issues uh, primarily with convenience stores in a number of communities around and in particular one of your neighboring communities. Um, I think that all of you are aware if you've been anywhere in Virginia at this point in time that these machines, games of skill, or my, what I'm talking about in particular are games of skill, nudge games and the like, are in convenience stores all over the Commonwealth of Virginia. I mean, I, I used to keep track of them as I would drive up and down the road, but I've kind of stopped. They're just everywhere. I, by way of example, in my neighborhood in Richmond, there's a 7-Eleven right around the corner, and there are two of them in there. And so I can tell you that I've seen them in convenience stores in downtown Richmond. I've seen them in suburban neighborhoods around Richmond. I've seen them in smaller cities throughout Virginia and in rural areas up and down, you know, Route 360 or Route 58 or wherever they may be. Um, I think, I, well, I don't want to sound like I know everybody's issues or, or create that, but I've heard a lot of, of, of people speak on these topics over the past several months. So I think I at least have an understanding of what people's concerns are. <coughs> and uh, I think I may know that some of the concerns that your community has. And I understand those communities, and so do my clients. And there are just a couple of points or a couple of suggestions that I wanted to discuss with you about the changes that you're making to your ordinance mm. and or proposed changes to that. And that is simply this. There is a difference, at least in my mind, between a what y'all refer to as an amusement center, okay, which is a by your own code um, defines as excuse me. Pardon me. An establishment, business, or location in which there are three amusement games or devices, okay? So an amusement facility, which <laughs> the, excuse me, the primary use of that piece of property would be to have games, whatever they may be. <coughs> There's a difference between that and, say, a convenience store or a restaurant or something like that. The primary purpose of that is to sell goods to members of the community, and then has an accessory use, which would be games. So in my mind, these games of skill, or whatever they may be, are in line with, with the next generation of video games and the like that have come down <coughs> through the ages. When I was a kid, there was a 7-Eleven down the street from my house that had a pinball machine, and then the pinball machine moved to a Pac-Man machine, Pac-Man moved to whatever it may be, and it goes down the line. But having one or two or three games in a convenience store doesn't convert a convenience store or a restaurant 
to, a, to an amusement center. Um, no more than having an ATM in those same buildings or same businesses or Xerox machines or those types of things <coughs> converts, you know, a restaurant or a store to a bank or a, a Kinko's copy center or whatever it may be. And so the point being that what, we, what I would hope that you would consider is when I look at the ordinance, and, and I want to make sure I understand it, this is the first time I've been before you, but we're talking about moving uh, several items from permitted uses to special use permit. And what I would ask you to consider is a carve out for something that is different that recognizes that concept of accessory use. Um, and accessory use is also a concept that is in the, the Pennsylvania County zoning ordinance, okay? Again, it's not the primary use, but you would expect it to be there. It's an incidental use. Um, you would expect that use to be part of whatever the primary use is. So a Pac-Man machine or a Xerox machine or an ATM or those types of things where it wouldn't be unexpected to you to see those in a convenience store. Um, as you drive around throughout Virginia, or in your own community. I'm sure that they are all over the place in convenience stores already. With that in mind, I took the liberty of sort of looking at the code, and it was a relatively quick one, so I apologize if I don't have everything, but I think I've got it here. Um, amusement centers, as I, as I said, is defined by your code already. Um, there is also uh, amusement game or device, which already, that definition already exists in your code, and that is a mechanical, electrical, or electronic coin or token operated <coughs> machine or device, which may be operated by the public for use as a game, entertainment, or amusement, including but not limited to such devices as pinball machines, video games, or any game utilizing video tube to produce or reproduce symbolic figures, but excluding, you know, blood pressure machines and the like. It also includes, and I'm paraphrasing and skipping over a little bit, the definition, pool tables, billiard tables, carom tables, shuffle bowling, and other devices and gaming tables, whether or not the same shall be coin or token operated. So the point of that is not to say that definition should necessarily govern, but to say that there is something in there. Um, I would also, it looks to me like there is not a definition of game room or um, electronic games, even though I think we all know what all of these things are, it's not actually in the code. Um, game machines, machine arcades, and amusement shops. And so the reason I, I, I simply bring that up is that in line with what I'm saying, that if you accept the premise that, you know, there's an accessory use and that, you know, perhaps this should not apply to a convenience store or a restaurant or another type of business that has less than a certain number threshold of games, you know, two or three or one or two, whatever, whatever you decide, that um, it seems to me that that would probably need to be reflected in this ordinance here so that there wouldn't be confusion because you've got, for example, amusement center, which as I said references three or less games, but then it says electronic games, which would suggest perhaps, you know, one if you had that. <laughs> So I guess it's a, it's a two-fold um, comment, if you will. One, um, the, the general comment that I have is that, again, you know, you have a primary use of a convenience store or restaurant or something like that, and the suggestion that one, two, three games does not change that primary use, and so therefore, you know, requiring somebody to go through a special use permitting process for that uh, doesn't make sense. I mean, accessory uses are, are recognized for that for that purpose, you know, to, you know, to make sure that people can operate their businesses on that small scale without having to go through that process. Now, again, if you're talking about a facility, you know, and what I think of as an arcade, but what, what you define as an amusement center, where well, that's going to be the primary purpose, well, then perhaps that, that is appropriate. But that's, that's not what I'm talking about here. And if that premise is accepted, the one that I say with the accessory use, to perhaps look at the, the words that are being moved or the words that are being used and make sure that they're internally consistent so that you don't have people like me coming back to you six months from now or eight months from now and trying to figure out what they meant. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions and I certainly appreciate you listening to me on, that, on this topic. Any questions? 
I have a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. You um you spoke as a game of skill. Yes, sir. Um how about chance or luck? Or gambling? Um, I don't in turn well let me let me take a step back. I don't represent anyone that that is trying to put those games forward in any kind of convenience. Yeah, I understand, but you know. It, as a general proposition. Um, I think that <coughs> As a zoning matter, which is what I'm, what mm -hmm. I'm here before sure, you yeah. on, mm -hmm. I think that it would apply the same way. Mm -hmm. In other words, I don't know that you can necessarily or should necessarily make a distinction between one video game and another for purposes of zoning and the number of games. If you decide to do that, then I think, again, <coughs> what you want to make sure you do or don't want to tell you what to do. I apologize sure. for that. But to me, it seems to make the most sense that you would define that pretty specifically so that somebody can understand what it is. Because, for example, a video game, you know, all of these, every game that I see now is mm -hmm. basically a video game. Even a pinball game machine has, mm -hmm. you know, an, an aspect of video to it now, you know. So all games are, are really video. Um, obviously, a pool table is not, but you know what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. So, mm -hmm. I think if you're going to make that distinction mm -hmm. between those types of games, that you would want to make sure that people could understand what the difference is between sure. a game of chance and a game of skill. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, th th okay. I think so. I was just. Sure. Mr. Douthat. Yes, sir. Who, who are you representing tonight? I'm here. I represent a number of convenience stores that are primarily in, in, a, in the Danville area. Okay. Um, and I am just here because we saw that this was going to happen mm -hmm. or that you were having this hearing. And this is the basic um, argument, uh, suggestion, theory, if you will, that, that I have carried forward in that community. Okay. Specifically before the Board of Zoning Appeals on that issue. Okay. At the uh, start of your uh, presentation, if I understood you correctly, convenience store is basically what it is. A convenience is where you can run in, purchase something, and leave without being there an hour, or hour and a half. Am I correct on it? I think that, that can certainly be correct at times. I would, uh, I guess, where I would differ a little bit from you in that is that I have been to many convenience stores. Um, well, I was going to say more in rural areas, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily true. Where people go in, get a cup of coffee, and socialize. You know, there'll be a stool or a table or whatever it may be, and they will socialize with their friends and neighbors for however long. You know. I've actually been in stores where I've seen people sitting around and the, the use, believe it or not, of the games that I'm talking about was as a table to hold a cup of coffee and no one was actually playing the game. Mm. But I do think that, yes, yes sir, I think the primary use of a convenience store is that people run in and they get their milk or they get a soda or a bag of chips or, you know, whatever. Whatever they need there and they may happen to stop and play a game while they are there. Right. But I think the difference between that and an amusement center or an amusement facility is people aren't going there for that particular purpose. To mm -hmm. further back up my question, uh, when that building a permit was issued, the building plans was presented to the county for it to be built, uh, they issued it on certain standards, parking facilities, restrooms, uh, occupied, people being occupied in there. So, if they say you need three parking spaces for that when it was issued, then you turn around and start putting in these skill games and you're sitting there an hour, two hours at a time. Where are the people going to be able to park while it comes in there to get the cup of coffee, the <coughs> loaf of bread, and leave. Can you explain that? Um, I will do my best. I, it's a hypothetical, so it's hard for me to explain um, what I can't verify. I will tell you, let me answer that in a couple of different ways. Um, as I said previously, and as I think 
y'all are aware, these stores are prevalent in convenience stores throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia, all over the place. I can tell you that I have never seen that issue. I personally have never seen that issue in a convenience store. And I have never actually heard that issue. I have never been to a convenience store where there has been a line of people waiting to play these games. I've never actually been to a convenience store where every game in the convenience store was being used at that particular time. Um, you need to come down yeah. to Vista where, you, where you're going later. <laughs> go to where else. You need to come down to Vista where I live. Okay, well, some people come in the morning and they'll sit for hours and hours and hours and hours. Okay. And I, I'll tell you, the reason I say that, I had a lady approach me uh, in Walmart. Yes, sir. It's been at least a month ago. And she just kicked her boyfriend out now. I'm just telling you the truth. She just kicked him out because he just blowed $17,000 in those machines. Okay. Um, wow. wow. Well, you see what I'm saying? I do. Um, and with all due respect to, to that person, I'm not sure that that's the video game's fault or the convenience store's fault. Um, but I do sympathize and I understand where that is, but never, again, I, okay. oh, sir, I'm sorry. No, I hadn't seen the owner get up and make them leave or anything. I'm just saying, you know, it's the person, I'm sure, and, of course, the owner's not pushing them to get out of the store either, so. No, I, that's, uh, that's probably yes. fair. That's probably fair. Mm -hmm. um, sir, uh, going back also, while the games are being played, you have deliveries being made to the store for this stock. Methods changes as we have, thank goodness. It used to be most of your delivery trucks were six wheelers or four wheelers. Now they are 18 or 14 wheelers or tractor trailers. That's, that's what I'm getting calls and complaints about. The parking lot is filled up. There's nowhere to go. Whether they're going to put codes in that is going to be able to govern because when this building permit, as I said, was issued, we were still delivering it was six wheelers, not tractor trailers. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would I wonder whether or not um, a lot of those codes were issued before a number of changes happened to convenience stores along the way, which would have increased traffic in ways that that were not there previously, whether it's ATM machines or Xerox machines or, you know, pizza and all of the things that now exist. I mean, convenience stores are much more multifaceted, at least they appear to be, than they were, you know, years ago when I was a kid. Um, to me, I, you know, I guess it comes down to this, is that what I would ask you to consider is that you know, a convenience store is a, a, convenience, a convenience store that exists now. If it doesn't have a game in it, it's a convenience store, okay? If you put a game or two games in that store, it's still a convenience store. And if, you know, after their, whether the, in other words, whether that you have one or two games in them, they still remain a convenience store. They could still have the potential problems that you're talking about, mm -hmm. whether it's parking or delivery trucks or whatever it may be. Um, but the nature of the store has not changed. And so that's, that's what I'm asking you to consider as you make your recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. And, the, and again, it's somewhat, it's a, I won't say it's recognized in your code, I don't think that's a fair statement, but there's an analogous concept that already exists in the code when you look at the definition of what an amusement center is. You know, when it's talking about three games. And so, to me, it suggests that there's a recognition, at least at some point in time, on that particular point, that you have to reach a certain threshold before you get to a special use permit process. Or Well, you've got, that's a permitted use in that now. But I would suggest to you that there's a distinction between that and, you know, having something that is going to be an arcade and something that is going to be a convenience store or a restaurant or whatever it may be that adds that, that in. Thank you. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you. Let yes. me ask yes. you something. Yes. Is there an age limit on children playing with these video games mm. like it would every, be buying beer? Every um, mm. store that I have dealt with 
the age of spent teeth. And who's going to be there to monitor that? Well, I think it would have to be a sore clerk. Um, in the same manner, I know that it, that sounds unusual, but that would have to, I mean, that could be in the same manner as perhaps, you know, when somebody comes and buys alcohol. Cigarettes. I mean, they can cigarettes question. Any sort of age-based um, restriction on something that you're getting, whether it's at a grocery store or a convenience store or whatever, you have to depend on somebody to do that. Um, so if it, you know, I mean, I, there are many ways you could do that. I mean, you could say to somebody, you can't play, I mean, I suppose you could put the same type of restriction on that. You know, you see stores where they say, uh, we card anybody that looks under 35, or we card anybody that looks under <coughs> I mean, now they get up to 45, 50, you know, because of the, the penalties are, are strict, and that's fine. It keeps, you know, it enforces what, what needs to be enforced. But I think there are ways to do that. And I think the answer to your question is, is you know, by, by nature, you would have to depend on those same people that you're depending upon for any other age restriction. I mean, I don't know any other way you could do it. Mr. Stokes. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. These games, I mean, it's about two, up to three in a, in a business. Are they paying out money? From time to time, yes, sir, they do. The way it generally works, or at least in my experience, the games that, that I have represented, the way it works is if you happen to win, if you negotiate the, the, the game to win, it doesn't, it's not like it's spitting out money like an it's a ticket, if you will, and you have to, and you go up to the to the cash register, and you tell the person, the cashier, "Hey, I won two dollars, whatever it may be." They pull the ticket off, and they cash the money out. So, in in many ways, well, it's really no different than say if you scratched a lottery ticket. You'd have to you'd stand there. If I guess if you went up to the little table and scratched it, you came back up and you said, "Hey, I, I won two dollars, or I won another lottery ticket, or whatever it may be." Um, but the payout, yes, there is a payout. Um, and, you know, my experience, I, you know, I don't know what the maximum is. I, I can't tell you that. I'm not an expert in games. But I've, I've never heard of it being an, ex, an exorbitant amount of money. Um, I certainly think that it would be in line with anything, you know, that you could get from an ATM. I mean, one of the things that, I, that, one of the things that I've suggested before is that, you know, people say, well, it's, it pays out money. That, that concerns me. Well, it may, and it may not. I mean, you may not win. You may not have the skill. You know, so it may end up being like just a video game, and you put your money in, and you lose your money. Okay, but every time you come to an ATM machine, I mean, every in a convenience store, I don't think people are depositing money into ATMs at convenience stores. But every time somebody goes in and uses an ATM machine to withdraw money, it's absolutely producing money, and that person is losing his money. So. If, it's, if your concern is a safety issue with that sort of thing, um, I think that there are, generally speaking, there are provisions in place because you go to the counter just like you would with anything else, and it's no greater if you left the store than with something else. Like the pinball machines that come when I was a teenager. Well, I, none of the pinball machines ever paid out to me. I don't, I don't think they did. They paid out to you. Did they? they did. The machine didn't give you the money, but you... Uh, Sold it back to them. Okay. I was never I mean, good enough. Uh, <laughs> I can see a parking problem. If you got three machines, you got a guy who's parked himself there for hours. There's two or three waiting to get to that machine. I mean, you can fill up a parking lot real quick. Well, perhaps. I, I mean, that, that's, I think that's a fair point. But you could fill up a parking lot with any number of things that could be in a convenience store, and people could sit around. And those same types of issues could happen if somebody decided to sit around and have several cups of coffee. Or they could, that same thing could happen if they sat around and decided to, you know, play scratch lottery tickets. Or that same thing could happen if they eat a sandwich. Um, you know, again, I mean, people use convenience stores for mm. different different purposes along the way and depending on where you are um, sometimes there are neighborhood meeting spots uh, in rural communities certainly I mean you can pull into you know if you're driving down a you know a rural highway you'll see a convenience store and if you pull in on a Saturday morning there'll be all kinds of people there you know they've got good food good coffee good company um, good and they've gossip. built 
good so, gossip. Good right. gossip, that's yes, right. sir, absolutely. And that fills up, um, you know, that can do the same thing. But yes, you, I, there, you could certainly have a parking problem, absolutely. But I think you could have a parking problem with any number of things. I got another question. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Um, I know the one, there's one in Alta Vista. They started out with like three machines. Now, would you be putting a limit on how many machines can go? Because they've got 14 now. Yes. Here's, here's well, I think that's up to you. And so my suggestion, my suggestion is simply this, is that there, again, and I, I apologize for repeating myself, but I think there is a distinction, and the point that I'm trying to make is there's a, there is a distinction between like an amusement center, which mm -hmm. is defined already in here, where to me the primary purpose, what you're using that building for, is for games. Now, what you're talking about is a convenience store that has 14 games, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I think that anybody could stand before you and make a, or stand or argue with me and make a plausible argument that there is a tipping point where the principal use of that property becomes something <coughs> other than a convenience store. So let's forget games for a moment, okay? Let's say you've just got a general, you know, a general convenience store, and it's selling pizza, a little bit of pizza, okay? And that's kind of a, a, a side, you know, business on it. It's an incidental use. And, but the pizza grows. And before you know it, they've got 40 tables in there, and they've got delivery people, and it's, you know, like, a, like any other chain delivery kind of place. Well, at some point, that may have changed, and it may have become a pizza place. I think the same thing would be true with games. Yeah. So the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that, yeah, I think there, there is a tipping point. And, and that's what I, what I would, you know, I, you obviously have, are tasked with making that recommendation. And, but to me, that tipping point is somewhere in the nature of, you know, two to three games. Um, you know, one, two, three games. Every time, the law says this, and this is probably a good way for you all to think about it. When you're talking about an incidental use, okay, or an you know, incidental accessory use, okay, when a court is looking at you're making arguments, if I'm doing that, every circumstance is kind of factually specific. Okay, you're looking at those particular facts. Obviously, you can't do that, you know, you, you, or it's difficult for you to do that. So you have to be thinking about it. Is it w one store or one machine or two machines or three machines or, or whatever it is? But the point is, or the point that I'm trying to make or the suggestion that I would make to you is that if, you're, if you move this language down there and you're requiring a special use permit for amusement center, that there is a lesser a number of machines you know, whether it's one or two or three or whatever it may be, that if a convenience store or a restaurant or whatever it is, it, it doesn't have to get a special use permit because it's not an amusement center. Does that make sense? Does that, does that? It does to me. Does that, mm -hmm. if I, may, I know it's, it's I, I struggle to articulate it a little bit, and sure. for that I apologize. But the point is, is if, if you're gonna require a special use permit for an amusement center, which, Absolutely, if you're going to make that recommendation, and I can understand that's because you've got that particular use. The suggestion is keep in mind that there could be fewer, you know, in, the, in these amusement, or excuse me, you know, convenience stores, restaurants, and whatever, that, that are already there, where it doesn't rise to that level. And that it, it is not wise or practical to make that business owner go get a special use permit mm -hmm. for that. That's that's the suge that's the suggestion. That's my 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 comment on that. Any more questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Sir, mm -hmm. thanks so much of it. It's okay. Uh, <clears throat> is it anyone else wish to address the commissioners on this that did not have opportunity? Here you come. Good evening. State your name and address, please. Sure. I'm, my name is Max Wegard. Um, my business address is 10 Franklin Road, Roanoke, Virginia. I'm a partner with a law firm of Gentry Locke. And I'm here um, as counsel for uh, Queen of Virginia Skill and Entertainment. It's one of the manufacturers of the skilled games that Mr. Douthat was talking about. Um, 
and that you all, all obviously have heard a lot about in, in the past few months. Um, I did not, unfortunately, sign up to speak because I, I rolled in a little bit late, so for, uh, please forgive me Excuse for that. Excuse me, just a bit, sorry, with the commission, yes. we give him the same, same opportunity. Time. Absolutely. We want to Th thank you. Questions. I didn't want to pull three minutes on that. Well, I appreciate that. you very much. Thank um, you, sir. And, and, and uh, Mr. Doubt, Doubt, um, Doubt and I have gotten to know each other over the past uh, few months because uh, we've been when working uh, on matters related to the same jurisdictions mm -hmm. uh, together. Um, my client is is in a different position than his. My client is the one is the uh, one of the, the the companies that makes the games, that operates the games, and enters into agreements with uh, the owners and operators of the of the stores in which these these games are located. Um, I will do my best not to retread the the ground that Mr. Douth has covered, but there's a couple things I'd like to to talk about to, uh, with y'all today. One is to prov provide you some context as to some of, of what's happening in the General Assembly and, and in Richmond uh, with regard to skilled games in particular, um, so that you all, as you make decisions about what to recommend to, the, um, uh, to the, the Board of Supervisors, will have that information or some information um, in to, to uh, take into account. <coughs> and then also just want to clarify that um, some of my, my clients' thoughts on, on um, where lines should be drawn or, or may be drawn with regard to, to some of these uh, use of these games um, as a whole. Um, just to, I'll be as direct as I can be about what's going on in Richmond right now. And I am not a lobbyist. My firm is not handling lobbying for, for my client. Um, so everything I'm about to tell you is, is, again, just sort of general context. But there are many bills that are presently being debated, discussed, uh, revised, amended, um, in committees in, in Richmond, both on, the, on the, the House delegate side and on, on the Senate side. What's happening in the House and what's happening in the Senate, frankly, is different. And crossovers next week, we'll see what ultimately happens between now and the end of session. But there's a spectrum of proposals on the table. Uh, everything from changing the definition of what is gambling in Virginia, which presently is defined as something as a game, the outcome of which is is uh, determined purely by chance, to be much broader than that, to include games of skill, gray games, whatever you want to, to refer to them as, the games that my client manufactures um, that are, are skilled-based and, and, in our view, distinguishable from games of chance. But there's a bill that would, would broaden the scope of, illegal, of the definition of illegal gambling to include those games and make them illegal in the Commonwealth of Virginia to the point that my client and others could operate them in other commonwealths, just not this commonwealth. Um, there are, are bills that would, there's a number of bills, frankly, that are focused on developing a meaningful regulatory scheme for these games. And in particular, using the lottery board, Virginia Lottery Board, to, um, to, to license manufacturers, the, the, the distributors, and the, the operators, or, or um, uh, what have you, of the games, um, and to, to regulate and license the games themselves, um, to set limits on, on age and meaningful ways of, of, of enforcing those limits, to set limits on the types of, of establishments in which they can be located, okay? So we'd be limited to things like truck stops and, and convenience stores and bars and restaurants, places where you may find lottery games today, right? So those sorts of limitations. Limitations on the number of games. So, so you know, limitations to one bill would, would limit to five. One bill would limit it in certain circumstances or two and others, right? Um, but I can tell you that, again, if I could predict what the, what the General Assembly is going to ultimately do, I'd be a, a very wealthy man. I can't predict exactly what they're going to do. Again. What the, the House seems to be doing, what the Senate seems to be doing are, are, are very different things. We'll see how it all comes out, works out in the wash. But um, what I can tell you is a few months from now, the, the <coughs> factual background and scenario upon which you all will be making decisions, regardless of how you, you ultimately decide to, to amend your, your zoning ordinance, will be very different. I can promise you that. And, so I, I would submit to you that as you're making your decision, please just bear in mind that with regard to, to these games, there's going to probably be a statutory definition. To the extent that they're legal in, in six months, there's going to be a statutory definition of where lines are drawn. 
right, and how those, those games are regulated. There are going to be limitations on age, uh, age uses. There's going to be licensing uh, regulations for, for <coughs> the various uh, entities in the, in the uh, chain of commerce in, in, in this industry. Um, and all the bills that I've reviewed, um, again, unless they're amended, preserve a number of uh, a certain discretion to uh, local jurisdictions, cities, counties, towns, um, to regulate these games in some way uh, by zoning and also to, um, well, there's, there's a bill that would propose um, a mechanism to tax these games at, at the local level in addition to proposed taxes at the, at the state level. So this, I don't know what, how it's going to work out. It is going to be very different. So as you're making decisions, just bear in mind that if you make a decision today, there will likely be a different set of circumstances in a few months, probably by, Ju I guess, by July, um, that may cause you to have to, to reevaluate and determine whether uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, some uh, additional changes are warranted. Um, my client has uh, a number of, uh, uh, you know, ha has games operating in convenience stores, truck stops, bars, and restaurants. They have, they only operate in, in locations that have uh, ABC licenses um, on account of the fact that you have on well, older clientele, there's lim age limitations and, and, you know, in some cases ID checks. But at the end of the day, you know, th these games, if they're regulated, will likely have to, to incorporate some way to make sure that the person who's playing is of age and, and, and can meet the requirements and limitations that are set by the Commonwealth. Um, but I submit to you that, that, that we agree that, that it, 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 it is your, it is within your discretion and, and it is, is a, 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 an appropriate and reasonable thing for you to do uh, to examine this use and to determine where to draw the lines between where it's potentially an accessory use like Mr. Douthat was describing, where you have one game in a convenience store that may not drive much, if any, additional traffic. It may not you know, have someone sitting in a, in a position much longer than they would otherwise <coughs> if they were enjoying a beverage or a sandwich or catching up with friends and sharing the gossip of, of the day. Um, and two or three, or I mean, one or two versus three or five or 14, you know, uh, businesses that are a truck stop where truckers are, are, truck drivers are required by law and regulation to, to sit idle mm -hmm. for certain periods of time. And it's customary, reasonable, um, and expected to see amusement devices, whether that's pinball or air hockey or a claw machine or video games or, or skilled gaming machines. Um, at a truck stop to give those those um, uh, those drivers something to do while they're required to, to be off the road and sitting in one, in one spot. Um, you know, to, to a, a bar or restaurant where someone is, is frequently looking for a way to pass the time or, or is, is, you know, there to recreate. The, the point I'm trying to make is that there are, are a spectrum of, of, uh, of different establishments there's a spectrum of different uses, a spectrum of different scopes of, of skilled gaming in particular as a use within, within different establishments. And we acknowledge that, that it is absolutely reasonable and appropriate for you all to, to want to examine that, uh, take a careful look at it, and determine where it's appropriate to require a special use permit, where it's appropriate to maybe not require one and allow it by right under certain circumstances. Um, and where to put conditions on the use. So obviously if you have five games or, or ten games, well, you're going to need a lot of parking spaces. You may need to have a, a higher, you know, and more, more uh, 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 I guess, uh, more onerous occupancy permit, right? Going from something that's mercantile and, and you know, just for, for convenience sort of a, a, a business where they're coming in, coming out, uh, buying their, their, uh, their goods and leaving, versus an assembly permit where you're, you're actually expecting people to go <coughs> and to stay and to be there for longer periods of time. That's all reasonable, but I agree with Mr. Dow that, that and, and in my client's experience and in other jurisdictions too, the zoning ordinances draw a distinction between a, a use of one machine or two machines, right, versus 
the use of, of maybe three or more. In some, con some cases, it's just one. In some cases, it's, it's one or two. Below that, that threshold of, of two games or three games, a, a, a special permit's not required because it doesn't, as Mr. Dautha described, change the underlying use of the, of the business in such a way as to trigger those concerns about parking, those concerns about whether there are public restrooms available, whether you know, it is an appropriate uh, location. Um, so as you're making decisions, I would just draw your attention to the fact that there's a universe of circumstances here. Obviously, um, you know, it's hard to identify each of them and to, and to contemplate each of them, but there is a limited number of circumstances where, at least in other jurisdictions um, w that we've worked with, uh, they said, yes, below this threshold, we'll, we're going to allow it as a just a, a, an amusement device because it really doesn't change the functional use of, of the property. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, I hope I've been helpful rather than muddying the waters further. Any questions? Thank you, Thank you sir. all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone, Excuse me. Go ahead. anyone else wish to address the commissions on this public hearing? At 8-11, the public hearing is closed. Mr. Chairman, let me ask the uh, council a question. Yeah, I was going to ask Greg, too. Uh, this gentleman just brought up about what's going on in Richmond, <coughs> that crazy <coughs> crowd down there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll mean that literally. Absolutely. Uh, do you? Should we should we wait on this or or should we still go go forward with with the possibility on July the first that we might have to regroup again? Mm. Right. Well, that's that's your prerogative. You could take no action tonight. You could tell staff to go back to the drawing board and define these terms better, or you could say, um, you know, do nothing mm -hmm. until and address this after July one when we know what this settled law is. Your recommendation to the board could be take no action on this till July 1, or you could recommend this language. So it's, it's your prerogative. Um, I, I do know that there are many bills in the legislature about this. I know there's also lawsuits going on about are these games a skill or games a chance. So we are in a, uh, a very unsettled area with this issue. Right Therefore, I don't think we should make any kind of judgment until we have a lot of answers to questions that we don't even know is coming yet. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I, I move that we uh, we table this and Absolutely. tell the Board of Supervisors that we'll do something after Jan or July the 1st. That's fine. I'll second that. Any more discussion? Motion by Mr. Haymore, second by Mr. Dudley, that the uh, table this uh, public hearing Absolutely. request to change the uh, wording of the ordinance until when, must July 1st, what do you say? July the 1st. Until after July the 1st. That's when they usually go into effect. Am I not correct, Council? Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you, sir. Any discussions? I think, I think we're good with that. Ms. Hayes, you want to call the roll? I want to table in. Mr. Until Motley? June. Yes. Mr. Haymore? Yes. Mr. Harker? Yes. Mr. Stowe? Yes. Ms. Meese? Yes. Ms. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Horn? Yes. Mr. Dudley? Yes. By a vote of 8-4-0 against, motion to table this until July the 1st is passed. Very good. Old business, Ms. Hayes? I don't have any, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hunt? No, sir. New business, Ms. Hayes? I don't have any. Mr. Hunt? No, sir. Any commissioners? At 8.14, meeting adjourned. What's that?